Hello everybody. Today I'm going to talk about navigating and creating routes in the Tesla Model 3. There'll be two parts to this. First I'm going to talk about a website called abetterrouteplanner.com and then I'm going to show you the internal uh, navigation system in the car. Now whether you've got your car or not, a better route planner is going to be one of your favorite websites. Uh, you probably use it a lot while you're waiting for a, your car to arrive, like a lot of people are. And it doesn't matter whether you've got a Tesla Model 3, Model S, any electric vehicle, you're going to find this website very useful. So this is the opening screen. And you can see uh, it looks like a typical sort of navigation system. Up at the top, you've got your from and to position. You've got your settings, you can save plans, uh, and you can obviously see a map. So first of all, let's have a quick look at the settings. Now this is where it gets really clever. You've got two layers of settings, and generally once you've set these, you don't need to think about them anymore. So the first thing you can think of is which car you've got. Now there are obviously a lot of cars in here. If you've got a Renault, Zoe, 41 kilo hour, a kilowatt hour R110, you can use that and it'll tell you what the reference consumption is. But obviously for my purposes, I'm going to pick my Model 3 Standard Range Plus rear wheel drive. The reference consumption is what it thinks you should be consuming at this speed, uh, what percentage of the reference speed you're going to be trying to do, what the maximum speed you're prepared to let it plan at, what charge you've got, and there's a little button there that says live data which you can see actually picks up information from the car, how much percentage you want to have when you get to the charger, if you've got to use a charger, and how much percentage you want to have left when you get to your final goal. You have all. You can also set things like outside temperature, wind, road conditions, how much your battery is degraded by, uh, how long it takes you to actually get to the charge point. This one here, the chargers, is very important. Now at the moment you can see that all I've got set is Tesla superchargers. But you can also set Tesla CCS, other people's CCS, Chadamo, and Level 2. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave Supercharger, Tesla CCS, and other CCS for the purposes of this. You can tell it if you want to avoid highways or ferries or car trains. Uh, I don't think you see many, that many of those nowadays. And you can create an automatic connection to your actual when you use the live data button to fill that in for you. Uh, you can set it whether you actually want to use live data or not, and you can create a, a better routeplanner.com login. You should always create that because it will save your settings. Uh, it's free, there's never been any charge for using this, and it will also allow you to save routes. So let's say we want to plan a route. I'm going to put in uh, a route for a place quite a long way away. Oops, it would help if I could spell Penzance. And there's Penzance, and it's automatically zoomed to show you how far they are away from each other, give you a rough idea. So if I click Plan Route now, it will automatically go off, and like any other sat nav, navigation system, Apple Maps, Google Maps, Waze, whatever, will automatically plan you a route. However, what it's doing is it's also working out where it thinks you should stop and how long you should stop for. Now I've told it that I want to get to Penzance with 10% left. Obviously uh, if I was trying to get back I'd probably want a little bit more than that. But let's say I'm just going to Penzance, I've got a house there, I've got a charger at that house and I want to get it down to 10%. What it's telling me is that when I arrive at Birmingham Hotwood Park I'll have 43% left, charge for 5 minutes and it'll get me up to 58%. Get down to Bristol M5, 18% left, 24 minutes to get me up to 74% and then finally Lifton, 46% uh, after I leave there, gets me to Penzance with 10%. This here is showing me what uh, fuel efficiency it thinks I will get on the way. This is telling me the total amount of time I will have to charge, and this here is telling me the total length of the journey, including the charging. Obviously, you've got the individual durations for the separate legs and how far they are. Now, this six hours, 45 year, that's what roughly I would expect it to take me to get to Penzance anyway, and 41 minutes. Now to me, on a six hour, 45 minute journey, I'm never only going to stop for 41 minutes. What you will find when you start using superchargers and any fast charger is that you will always uh, be finished after the car. 
So even if you're just going to the bathroom and you're getting a cup of coffee or you're getting a sandwich or you want to go to the shop and buy some chocolate, or obviously if you want to sit down and have a full meal, the car will almost certainly, when you plot a route like this, be ready before you are. I mean, five minutes is barely enough time to get out of the car and get into the services or whatever shops there are nearby. You can look at the route, you can tell it whether you definitely want to stop at these places or whether you want to take a longer break there. You can tell it not to use this charger. Uh, you know, you can click on the route itself and it will tell you what sort of charge you're going to have. So when you get to Lifton at that time, assuming I set off now, uh, assuming you set off that many hours after uh, the time, then, you know, what sort of charge you're going to have. This is showing you the elevation as it goes up and down. Okay, so similarly, you can basically click around. It is incredibly useful, okay? One thing it gives you is confidence. You know that if you're going to head somewhere, you're gonna have the confidence to be able to get there. Now, I've just plotted a route to get me home, and what I'm gonna do now is hide the settings, because like I said, once you've set them, you probably don't need them anymore. But what I'm gonna do now is if I click this button, it says, not only do I want to get to Penzance, but I also want to get home again afterwards. Obviously, pretty important. And you will see that the route it plans this time, although probably pretty similar, is gonna change around the Penzance area because it's gonna to have to get me home. Okay, so same on the way there. Penzance, you got a lot uh, more uh, electricity left in the battery and then pretty much the same back. So it's now actually saying it's gonna take seven hours and 18 minutes to get there because it's actually added a bit more charging time. On the way back, it's only six hours 57. The other thing it shows you is how much it's gonna cost you to charge. So that's a 700 mile journey for 40 pound. Now, I think fuel's between five and six pound a gallon at the moment. So basically we're talking about, let's say, uh, at least eight gallons, uh, eight, that's equivalent of eight gallons of fuel. Okay, there's not that many cars that will do 750 miles on eight gallons of fuel. And that's assuming that fuel is cheap. I actually think it's gone up recently. Okay, hope you found that useful. One of the other things you will find with this is you can save your plans. So once you've planned a route, you can save it and you can recall it. So what I've done is uh, I'm planning a few road trips. So I've done some road trips that show me routes around the UK or certainly around England using as many superchargers as possible. So that's one route there up to the Lake District and then down uh, back here or vice versa. In fact it starts at Stoke-on-Trent and then another route I, I decided to do was sort of the Midlands, the South Midlands and you can see uh, getting to Telford and back south of Birmingham and then back up via Grantham. Okay, hope you found that useful. I find this tool very good for planning. I play with it a lot. It's one of these fascinating little tools that you will use. Even if you haven't got your car yet, you can put in your daily commute, you know, if or if you're a, a traveling salesman or somebody who runs up and down the motorway a lot, you can put in regular places that you visit and you can see just how much you can do. Okay, I hope you find that useful. In the second half of this video, I'm gonna show you what the car navigation can do for itself, because it can do some of this as well. Uh, it's just not quite as flexible as this. Okay, see you on the other side. Bye. Hello there. Here you can see the navigation screen on the Tesla Model 3. So obviously over here, you've got your standard map view, but if you want to navigate, there's two ways of doing it. One way is you can click the navigate button and you can start typing in your location. But one of the easier ways of doing it is to actually hit this button here, navigate to Penzance. So what that's done is it's gone off, found that location, and it's obviously put a little marker there where it thinks we want to navigate to. It's telling us how far it is away and if we click on the navigate button, it will actually calculate a route for us. Now, while we're looking at it calculate the route, you can see that it's showing you all the Tesla superchargers uh, that are available, including some in France. 
it's telling you how long it's going to take you to get there, 6 hours 19 minutes. It's telling you where it wants you to charge, so Hotwood Park and Darts Farm, and how long it will take you to charge when you get there. So it's saying you're going to arrive there with 36%. This car is currently at 90%, so uh, it's going to get it down to 36%, and you're going to have to sit there for 40 minutes and charge. Obviously, there's generally at these superchargers, there's lots of things to do. Uh, so we usually go off and have something to eat. Then you get to Darts Farm, which apparently is a fantastic place to visit. Uh, it's one of the biggest farm shops in the country. And you're going to have to stay there for 25 minutes. And when you get to Penzance, you'll have 16% left. Okay, so you can look at that. You can click Begin Trip and it will start to show your information. You've got different views. So you've got this view, which is showing you where to, uh, with Northup. Then you look at that one, it's showing you guidance, so you get a slightly 3D view. If you want to see the first leg, you can see that, so you can have a rough idea where you're going to head to, and you're going to end up there. And that's what you're going to do when you get there, you're going to charge. Or you can see the entire trip, if you want to view the entire thing. Uh, if you click on here, you can see just your next junction, and if you pull that down, you can see the entire thing. Okay, so the navigation is really easy. I'm going to cancel that one because I don't particularly want to go to Penzance. But what I could do is I could say, navigate to Marble Arch. Now what this is going to do here is it's going to find lots of different places called Marble Arch. So you can see there are dozens, if not you know hundreds of places probably in the UK called Marble Arch. So what you need to do in this case is pick one, and it's put the, the most logical one at the top. And there it will show you the route that it works out uh, to get you to Marble Arch. Now what this is saying here is you're going to arrive there with 18%. And you can see all the route, and now it's, it's going to start the route for you. So one thing it also shows you, if you scroll to the bottom, is that if you try and get home you're going to end up on minus 59%. Obviously, that's not very useful. Uh, but this is very useful if you're plotting a route, it will tell you which charges to go to. There's no way of transferring routes from a better route planner to this. Uh, there's no way of putting trips in. All you can do is put an individual location in. But it is really fast. Uh, it, it is dealing with the traffic. So even though you're not seeing the red lines where the traffic is, it does know about that traffic and it will divert you if it thinks you found a, if it thinks it's found a faster route for you. Uh, the other thing is, if you want to change your location at any point, even while you're in the middle of a route, it's very easy thanks to the voice recognition and the typing's quite easy to do as well. Uh, okay, between the two of them, between a better route planner .com and the Tesla Model 3 navigation, you've got a pretty good suite of tools for navigating yourself around not just the UK, but Europe and the rest of the world as well. I hope you found those very useful and any more comments, just post them below. Uh, if you like it, subscribe. If you don't like it, that's fine as well. And don't forget about the referral code. If you use my referral code, you will get a thousand three miles of supercharging. Thanks. Bye.